Well, remember, we're studying from the Chronological Bible, and uh, this is where it gets a little messy. Uh, we could come to a section, uh, an event, if you will, of Jesus um, calling his disciples. And it's uh, sometimes misleading if you're just jumping from part to part, thinking that all of a sudden he saw some strangers on the beach and he called his disciples. Uh, there's every evidence that uh, he had met these fellows before, uh, maybe had fellowship with them, maybe uh, even studied a little bit with them. Uh, we know that uh, some of these disciples were had been John the Baptist disciples. And if you read over at John 1, 37 through 42, which we believe chronologically came before uh, this event, if you will, at the Sea of Galilee, uh, then you recognize that Jesus probably already had a relationship uh, with these men and, and they get to know each other before this particular event. You're going to find this event in Matthew 4, 18 through 22. You're going to find it in Mark 1, 16 through 20. And you're going to find it in Luke 5, 1 through 11. However, today I'm going to only comment on the Luke 5, 1 through 11, because it gives far more detail uh, than the others do. And uh, there's no contradictions in the others. I'm just going to go based on the fact that uh, we had seen Jesus at Sychar. He went to Canaan of Galilee. He healed a nobleman's son. Uh, then he went down to Nazareth where he wasn't accepted, walked away from being thrown off a cliff. And now he has gone over to Capernaum, uh, approximately 30 or 40 miles from Nazareth, uh, up on the northwest coast of uh, the Sea of Galilee. And it says he settled there. Uh, so we know that this is uh, a time when he spent some significant time at Capernaum on the Sea of Galilee. And uh, there he's walking on the beach and he sees two brothers, Peter and Andrew, who are casting nets, evidently casting them into the sea to, to seine net, if you will, uh, or to cast net, if you will, uh, some fish there at the Sea of Galilee. And then he sees two other brothers, James and John, in a boat, and they're mending their nets and cleaning their nets. <clears throat> and it says that there was a large crowd pressing in on him who was listening to his teaching and <clears throat> he uh, moves offshore slightly to get away from the crowds uh, so they're not pressing him but it's so that he can sit down and teach them and he gets into Peter's boat and uh, and teaches for who knows how long uh, but he sat down to do it so it was probably a fairly lengthy preaching time or teaching time and then he says to Simon he said let's launch out and uh, go fishing and Peter says, we've fished all night. If you'll see that around four, verse 4. We fished all night. We caught nothing. <laughs> it wasn't that they didn't have a good fishing outing. They had a lousy fishing outing. And he can't understand why Jesus would want to go out again uh, when fishing is so bad. Nevertheless, Jesus takes them out fishing. They lower to the nets at Jesus' command. And the nets are filled with fish, so much so that they have to signal to the other boat. Uh, likely the same boat that we were talking about before when we talked about James and John and uh, signaled the other boat and they're filling up both boats with fish so much that they're almost ready to sink. They've got so much weight in them. And uh, Peter and John, uh, uh, obviously very impressed by this, but particularly Peter, he falls at Jesus' feet and he says, depart from me, I'm a sinful man. Well, that's the very ones that need Jesus the most, isn't it? The sinful man. In any case, uh, they uh, have this large catch of fish. And uh, when Jesus calls them uh, in all of these accounts, you'll find that he said, come follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. And uh, in verse 11, you see a phrase that uh, was very, very significant in all of these gospel accounts. And that is, that they left everything and followed Jesus. And I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know how many of you have ever done that. Left whatever you knew, a job that you knew, and a trade that you knew, and went into something totally different. But just about every pastor that's called 
uh, does that, even if it's just leaving study of Jesus in uh, seminaries or college or, or uh, Bible schools, uh, you leaving uh, a, a, a routine of study going into a routine of pastoring or, or preaching. And uh, many of the ones that I know have gone from business careers uh, into ministry uh, and uh, it is a complete change and it's a little scary when you leave something that you know and that's something that you're good at and go into uh, to the calling that God has on your life and these men uh, left their boats their fishing trade and uh, became nomads if you will with Jesus as his disciples uh, it costs something to follow Jesus, and it is different. Your life becomes different when you follow Jesus. But the most important phrase that I want you to pick up on is the fact that Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men. I, he didn't say, I'm going to make you healers. He didn't say, I'm going to make you uh, millions of dollars. He didn't say, I'm going to uh, make you teachers that will teach all of the disciples. He said, I'm going to make you fishers of men. I'm going to use you to call men to myself. I'm going to use you to tell people the good news of the gospel. And certainly he's still calling people to do that. As a matter of fact, I think that we've put way too much emphasis on the actual act of worship and not enough emphasis on discipleship and salvation, evangelism. But in any case, I'll get off my soapbox and tell you, and that's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.